Hi everyone, we are so pleased for you to join us here for the OHPM Open Science Special Interest Group Open Science Room, also known as the OSR. The, the OSR officially opens tomorrow on the first day of the OHBM meeting, but we thought it would be nice to all meet up before things kick off uh, to say hello to each other and introduce ourselves. Uh, so while we are here, um, we're going to take a few minutes to talk to you about what is the OSR, who we are, uh, who the Open Science SIG is, and what you can expect uh, from us uh, and from the community over the next two weeks as part of the OHBM program. Um, so the intention with this little video is to help you navigate your way through the virtual meeting and get the most out of your experience. But before we get too deep into this, we'd like to take a moment to reflect on and acknowledge the unprecedented times that we're all experiencing right now. Mm. So we've been brought to this uh, whole virtual setup and meeting because of a, of a global pandemic, which continues to cause pain and to distress millions of people worldwide. And we will continue to feel the repercussions of this for so many years to come. And we can acknowledge the new opportunities that this brings, but we must also recognize that the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated existing inequalities and systems of oppression, causing those who are already systematically disadvantaged to suffer the worst consequences. And we can see this happening in our own world of academic, academic research, but I'm sure most of us have witnessed this to some extent in our own towns and cities and neighborhoods. So um, in the OHBM and the OSR um, or the OSSIG, uh, we are a group based on access, inclusion and equity. And as, as such, we will continue to support practices which lower barriers for the systematically disadvantaged. Um, and we will continue to campaign for equitable access to tools and resources which can help us all lead healthier and happier lives. And uh, recent weeks have also seen a global call to action to recognize the dangerous systematic oppression experienced by black and indigenous peoples. So um, the Black Lives Matter movement has been a real wake up call to many of us, uh, specifically to take a closer look at how we are engaging in a system which uh, discriminates against, criminalizes and vilifies people based on the color of their skin. We as a SIG have been working to improve the diversity of our speakers and improve, improve representation of black and indigenous peoples at our events. But we know that we've got a really long way to go particularly in how the SIG itself is constituted. Uh, so on that note, our next round of leadership um, are committed to continuing this work uh, that we have already started and going much, much further. So we, we really stand in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement and all that they stand for. Thank you. So now coming back to this event, we will start with a bit about who we are. So um, the Open Science Room or the OSR um, is organized by the OHPM Open Science Special Interest Group. And we are a group that's dedicated to promoting and supporting open science within our community. Um, and this is through organizing events, training and opportunities for pro professional development um, within the community and in the wider scientific, a wider scientific environment. So the OSR is our annual event at the OHBM meeting. So we have two events, uh, like every year we have a hackathon and the open science room. The hackathon normally happens before the open science room and the open science room happens in the meeting. We're normally physically in the meeting. At the moment we are virtually parallel to the meeting, but we're still part of the meeting. Yeah. Um, so, so what do we do in the OSR? Um, we host a wide range of, of or types of content. Um, we have keynotes, we have lightning talks, we have demos, and also what we like to call emergent unconference style discussions. So just a quick overview of those keynotes, uh, I'm sure most of you will be familiar with. These are typical in scientific conferences. Lightning talks are about five minutes in length and it's, it's a quick talk to showcase a specific uh, um, body of work um, by people in our community. 
demo is typically a software demonstration, but it could also be a demonstration of a process that, that people have been working on. And emergent or unconference style discussions is what, uh, what we're also quite um, excited about um, in the sense that we can bring people of the community together to discuss um, topics that, that, um, that they are uh, passionate about and that, that we find important as a community. Um, especially when it comes to our themes that we that we have uh, selected for this year's OSR. So our themes this year are um, what we're calling Open Data 2.0 and the 2.0 is to reflect a kind of a step change from uh, open data as like here's a static thing which I'm going to deposit and there you go my data is open. So we're trying to we want to discuss and think about what we can do to bring more engagement with that data what resources do we need to be able to share that more widely what does that look like in terms of like big collaborations and things like this so no longer or we 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 think we're now ready to move towards a place where just going here is my data done that's the end of the story that's not that we can do better than that and so that's what we want to think about in that theme our second theme is open workflows so this is all really about um, reproducibility and reproducible pipelines. So if you are doing everything manually as like I do this bit of work and then I run this bit of code and then I do this bit of editing, it's really difficult to reproduce that as a, a body of work. So the idea of like a organized workflow should take you from one point to the next in a way that you can perform that action again and potentially share your workflow with other people. So this is what you'll be hearing about in workflows, how people are doing that sort of A to Z or A to Z and then back around to A again, this whole process. And then our final theme is the past, present and future of open neuroimaging. So here we're going to look a bit back and have a few like retrospectives about the software and things that people have been using. But we're also looking towards kind of opportunities that we have as a community to um, share our work and also some kind of new directions that we can be thinking about like we're all used to used to talking about open data and open software but there's also another other opportunities that we can that we should be aware of to help our science and research reach wider audiences so that's where we're looking to the future that's everything that's all the themes yes <laughs> yeah so it's three three um three uh themes and we have essentially also three days scheduled of, of content around those themes so a theme per day and we have keynotes uh, lightning talks demos and immersion sessions on each of those days relating to those themes and something else with it we're quite excited about that we brought into um both the hackathon and the open science room this year um is the concept of time zone hubs i mean the concept exists already but we are making use of it so we want to be a, a group that that builds uh, a more inclusive community and we want to make uh, whatever content we we um, put out there more accessible to to our global uh, community and this means we, we want to make content available in time zones and and times specifically that are comfortable comfortable for people um, in their kind of uh, working hours so we uh, are building on this concept of three hubs um, so we have um, a schedule that repeats three times per day once per hub so we start in the asia pacific uh, region um, we have a schedule there then we repeat the schedule in the in europe middle east and africa and then we end the schedule in the americas um, yeah so basically you can Get the same content you can join from your hub you are also welcome to join from other hubs uh, whatever suits your um your schedule yeah so i'm currently based in the uk but you might find me popping up in asia because sometimes i'm working at that time and that's fine we all have different patterns yeah. and a thing particularly around that that we've worked really hard on is to make it easy for you. Like the headaches that we've had trying to understand other people's time zones. Like some people, actually I don't know anyone who really gets it. I was gonna say some people really get it, but 
I don't know anyone that finds it easy to understand what mountain time is, for example. So our um, schedule online, all you have to do is select the hub that you're in, which is roughly some like third of the world. And then at the top, you just type in the name of your city or like roughly where you are. And then all our times get adjusted for you. So I no longer have to worry about what time zone Stefan's in, um, which is great for me. Which is just one hour away. So it's, it's just one hour away. I should be fine with it. <laughs> yeah, not too difficult. <laughs> no, right? But <clears throat> you were still like two hours early for a meeting, but that was <laughs> happening in a day. Oh, yes, UTC plus two, UTC minus two seems to not be different. Yeah. It's all about UTC, <laughs> right? Anyway, um, so I'll quickly mention the, the platforms that we're working on and Stefan can come in and, and talk about some of these as well. So you are currently watching this video either because you are registered for the OHBM meeting, in which case you're probably joining us from the OHBM online platform, or uh, you're registered just for the open science room, in which case you've registered at zero cost. Uh, so we're so pleased to be able to integrate these two audiences together. Um, so we've got two main like angles of people coming into us. Um, you, if you're coming from the OHBM platform, you just go to this one place and all of our content will be streaming at a time that will be shown on the schedule. If you're uh, coming in the zero cost route, you're probably watching us on Crowdcast or Douyu um, in countries where Crowdcast is not available. If you wanna do some text chat with us, um, you can do that on the OHBM platform or you can also do that on Crowdcast or you can also do it on Mattermost. So we know that every platform isn't perfect for everyone. So we've got a bunch of platforms, which makes it like super complicated for us a little bit, but we're handling it, but we- Super a little bit. Super a little <laughs> bit. Somewhere between that is reality, um, but we're managing it. We've got people on all the different platforms who are like there to welcome you, there to answer your questions. So wherever you, you feel most comfortable engaging, that's where we want to hear from you. If you're already all over Matamost, go for it. If you want to talk on Crowdcast, that's fine. We're down for that too. And then two more platforms that we're working, uh, that we're using. We are using Jitsi, which is a uh, open source, um, like video conferencing thing. So we've got Jitsi links available during all the, the whole time, but at like break times, you can go to Jitsi if you want to have a quick video chat with people. And we are uh, incredibly impressed with ourselves that we came up with an amazing pun for break times on Jitsi. It, we're calling that snack overflow because we all do programming and there's stack overflow. So break times is snack overflow. See you did, on we say, did we agree that we were going to explain it? <laughs> or I think it needs explaining. It's the power of, of a pun. <laughs> If you already got the pun, then you're in the right place. If you didn't, you're very welcome to that. We're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other, the final one is um, a place called, or a platform called Gather Town, which is kind of like, um, again, it's free and all online and it's really easy to get to. And you're like this little eight bit avatar thing, like do -do doing around like a little place and it's just like arrows and, um, the, some people in the hackathon team have built this like cool map of like, it's like, I don't know, it's like a lobby and there's like outside space and there's a fountain and there's a bar and there's like a cafe. So you walk around with your little character and every time you get like close enough to someone, their little, their um, webcam yeah. pops yeah. up. So you can see people. So you navigate around this place and you go, oh, there's a person over there I want to talk to. You can see their like, name on top of their person you go oh hello and then you talk to them so it's a bit like kind of encouraging some social some mm. movement and stuff like that yeah, so i think the worked, um sorry i guess it, it, the, it worked really well at hackathon um, yeah people seem to really like it so we're going to give it a go and hopefully you'll like it too that's one of the like the social interaction i guess is what is important for a lot of people at uh, an in-person conference and which like a lot of people have doubts about for virtual conferences. And so far the feedback about Gathertown has been quite positive. So we're hoping that uh, contributes to, to your experience to make it uh, a better one. So um, we have 
put all of these platforms together to, to give you a virtual OSR experience. Um, and we also want to make it really easy for you to, to get the information that you need. So we have this join page on our website and there you should be able to find all the links to the required uh, platforms. Um, for example, if you go to the join page, you will easily find the schedule for your specific hub and you can go to a specific day, you can find there a link that goes directly to Crowdcast. Uh, on that note, for Crowdcast, uh, but also for um, Gather Town and Jitsi, the passwords that you need to enter that will all be sent or will have been sent to you by email. So any passwords that you need, please have a look at your email. Um, and that is for uh, our zero cost participants who registered via the website. If you are joining us from the OHPM platform, you will be able to find that at the uh, information booth uh, of the Open Science SIG Open Science Room. Cool. Um, so we have, uh, we know that Open Science is all about collaboration and collaborative working and sharing. So we really want for you to sort of collaborate on this OSR experience with us. So many of you are doing that by giving talks and hosting emergent sessions, um, but we also really like invite you to and encourage you to use the text chat and like answer each other's questions. And depending on where you are and what platform you're on, we might also um, ask you to pop up on the screen with us on the Crowdcast screen. It's super easy to bring people on and say like, hey, what have you enjoyed these last few days? What is, you know, what are you looking forward to? So if you're happy to, we might ask you to come on screen and say hello and introduce yourselves. Um, it's also a kind of like a part of our attempt to try and make this something closer to a, um, a real or an in-person conference. You know, normally we'd be walking around and, meeting each other and going for dinner and stuff but this we we have to kind of think of creative ways that we can bring some of that back you know like i want to wave at someone from across the room and go hey how was your day yesterday <laughs> but we have to make it <laughs> kind of a bit more orchestrated but so we hope you'll like hope you're cool with that hope you're you want to share in that with us and then um, we'll see we'll see how it goes it, equally if you don't want to do the text chat thing if you don't want to come up on screen that's totally fine too as well yeah of course so um another point on the collaborative approach that we like to take is also um is building on what what typically might happen in the at an in-person conference so you meet up with people with similar interests you start talking and then you start talking about ideas and you get this bright spark and build a bit just in conversation on those ideas and we would like to make that that workflow part of of the virtual osr experience as well so that's specifically why we also have this idea of emergent sessions so it's it's essentially a session or topic that kind of emerges um out of just collaborating um and we have a bunch of them already scheduled for the first week of the osr um with topics that relate to the themes but we also want you to collaborate with us on on emergent session topics that you find important um, and we have a workflow uh, available on the website to allow you to submit these ideas and then to bring that discussion to the osr so we have a bunch of open slots for these sessions in the second week um, and uh, we would like for you to submit your ideas discuss it a bit beforehand put an abstract on, it goes on GitHub, people can view it. And based on that, we can quickly uh, send you a, a message to select a slot in one of the, um, the open slots. And then we just put it up on the schedule and continue with that. Cool. So we really invite you to, to do that. So these emergents are like um, conversations that you might want to have like in some way publicly. Um, so if you want to just chat amongst yourselves, that's cool. But if you think other people would be interested in yeah. what you're talking about, which I guess they probably will be, most of us, we've got loads of time in the second week of the conference specifically just for that. So we'd love to help you out. Just a quick point. Uh, we might have said it before, but to be clear, the, all the content that uh, we will make available th through the OSR will be broadcast publicly as well so may, maybe think about that when you think about joining on screen if you want mm. uh, your face to be shown <laughs> on the internet if you don't want to no problem 
um but that's just a note that you should be aware of yeah yeah no that's really important we so we had like a little tick box on registration that says you agree to allow yes. us to use all your images and stuff and that's fine and when like data privacy and stuff is something that's really important to us as well as as the sig so we will manage your data carefully but um yeah if you do put your face on screen there's a chance that your face will appear on screen again on youtube for example okay so a couple more points of housekeeping we're nearly done um so first we'd like to thank our sponsors so a note personal note for me on this is often when you hear people say we'd like to thank our sponsors it kind of feels a bit like empty but actually being like on the inside of this process i now really understand what it means to thank our sponsors and we really do thank our sponsors um so I'm going to list them all now. These are in alphabetical order. Uh, the Canadian Open Neuroscience Platform, the Courtois NeuroMod Project, the International Neuroinformatics Coordinating Facility, you may know them as INCF, the OHBM Australian Chapter, Open Neuro, and the Welcome Centre for Integrative Neuroimaging. I'd also like to thank two of our most recent sponsors. Firstly, um, Unique, Unifying Neuroscience and Artificial Intelligence Quebec. And secondly, also the Quebec Bioimaging Network. Thanks. So these people have all um, made generous donations, which have helped us bring the OSR to you this year. So the Virtual conference does cost less to run than an in-person conference, but it's by no means free. Like we would love to be able to do all this for free, but it's just not possible. It costs people's time and money and skills to produce this. We're not getting paid. None of the OSR volunteers are getting paid, but we do have to buy stuff to bring this to you. And that's just part of life and it's fair. People need to get paid for the stuff they do. So. The sponsor money has gone on paying for licensing for these platforms that we're communicating with you. We've had to buy a bunch of like background tools to make our workflow and lives a bit easier. We've, we've in all the times we've tried to go for free options because that's like our ethos, but sometimes you have to pay for something. We've also spent a, a fair amount of money or we've got money available to give mini grants to people. Um, and that's particularly to help around access. So we've got, mini grants for speakers, mini grants for participants are available, and also mini grants for people who have been trainers in the hackathon. And then our final area of costing is around um, mandatory registrations and stuff. So again, to our sponsors, thank you so much. And it, it really means a lot to us that, that you were so generous with, with what you've provided. And also for you all to know that these people, these people are interested in supporting activities like this. So. Uh, so we need to thank a lot more people, right? So I would like to also thank our speakers. Um, given that this is a virtual conference, there's very different preparation that goes into it. Specifically, um, a lot of these talks have been pre-recorded um, and the communication around that, um, the back and forth and uh, just understanding which steps you have to follow to pre-record and which formats and uh, yeah, it's intense and there's a lot of effort. So we would really like to thank our speakers for doing that and for, for also bearing with us in that process. And we are, we are really excited to share all of their work um, in this, uh, what, what we definitely see as a very exciting program of the OSR. Totally. Um, and then another round of big thank yous to our volunteers. So when we, um, we were always like Stefan and I and our plan for the open science room. We always wanted it to involve more people than just us because, you know, being involved in something helps you feel like you own it. And that's, mm. that's the vibe that we wanted to go with. Um, but when we had to um, start thinking about this being a virtual event, we realized how many more people we'd need yeah. to have involved just to get things done in the time frame, let alone to get things done in, three time zones over the world so we've like put out numerous calls for like ah, who can help us do the osr and um, people have been so generous with their time and their skills yeah. and their enthusiasm and we've really loved working with everyone like it's been so much fun and it's brought a new spin 
on the OSR. And that's something I think that it's going to be really hard to let go of after this meeting. Um, and we really hope that you've enjoyed working with us as well and, yes. and your time with the SIG. And, you know, it's, it's a growing, the SIG is growing and that's a good thing. So keep on staying engaged with us and give us your ideas and, and let's just continue having fun with it. I think is important. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't think I can add anything more except for it's been awesome working with all of our volunteers. Um, so thank you. Yeah. Um, I think we are moving towards close and one important thing that, that we need to focus on as well um, is the code of conduct. Um, so all of us registered for this event uh, in whichever route, but we agreed to the code of conduct when we registered. And uh, our code of conduct or the OHBM's code of conduct is designed to build um, towards building a safe and positive experience for us all. And uh, that is really something we hope for all to recognize as being central uh, to the ethos of open and inclusive science. So this next like section of what we're gonna talk to you about is we're kind of going to quote directly from the code of conduct because we know everyone like myself included, you tick these boxes and go, yeah, I agree to the code of conduct, but we want to make it um, easy for you to understand what you're actually agreeing to and what is expected of you. So we're going to be like naming a whole bunch of things and it's going to sound like we're going blah, 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 like parroting robotic stuff. But this is just because we want, we want to tell you this. So you, can take it on board as, as much as possible. Okay, so at this and all OS SIG events, we welcome and respect diversity. We explicitly honor diversity in age, culture, ethnicity, gender identity or expression, language, national origin, political beliefs, profession, race, religion, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic status. We expect community members to be respectful of different cultural practices, attitudes, and beliefs. This includes being aware of pronouns and preferred titles, as well as using a respectful tone of voice. We stand against discrimination in all forms based on but not limited geographic location, gender, gender identity and expression, sexual orientation, disability, physical appearance, body size, accent, race, ethnicity, age, or religion. We do not tolerate discrimination or harassment of conference participants and organizers. So participants asked to stop any harassing behavior are ex uh, expected to comply immediately. And if anyone engages in harassing behavior, we and the OHVM retain the right to take any actions to keep the event a welcoming environment for all participants. Potential actions include but are not limited to are not limited to warning the offender expulsion from the specific event or immediate expulsion from the conference um, with no refund so we encourage you to report incidents of harassment that you experience or witness you know it's all very well and good have saying this stuff about we do not tolerate discrimination on the basis of gender identity but unless we all as a community agree to um, support that being upheld as a policy, then the policy is worthless. So if you experience or witness anything happening around this, then we do encourage you to report it if you feel safe to do so. So if someone makes you or anyone else feel unsafe or unwelcome, please report it as soon as possible to the OHBM executive director or the OHBM chair, whose contact information can be found on the OHBM website at www.humanbrainmapping.org. You can make the report either personally or anonymously. You can make an anonymous report by completing a web page hosted on, um, by the OHBM Executive Office. If you make an anonymous report, the obviously we can't follow up when, with you individually, but we it will be investigated to the best of the ability of OHBM and they'll take whatever action is necessary to prevent their occurrence. If you want to make a personal report, you can do that by calling or messaging the executive office uh, at a telephone number, which is listed on their website. We can, um, 
you, this is linked from our um, web pages as well. Alternatively, you can contact a member of the executive office, which is also listed on the Human Brain Mapping website. So that's um, it's a long it's a long list of things to be aware of and consider. Um, and there's also kind of the the point where you get to a reporting stage. That means you're you're um, accepting the responsibility to communicate this event to someone else in order for them to be uh, for the event to be dealt with in the appropriate manner so we're really grateful for all of your support in, in doing this and as i said it's all about maintaining a, a safe and welcoming environment so the the safer and happier we all feel the easier it is for us all to do our best work so that's what we're here for we're here to help everyone feel happy and welcome and do their best open science work I think that's it, right? Yeah. So that. Well, thank you. So right? With that, we would like to thank you for joining. Uh, we are very excited about what the next uh, couple of weeks will, will hold for us. And we hope you are excited too. And hopefully we can just join in that excitement and uh, chat and video chat and text chat and participate uh, and collaborate. Yeah. Bump into each other on Gather Town. And yeah. yeah. Um, and we don't want to labor this point too much, but there's a lot of moving parts to this meeting and there's a lot of people being awake past their bedtimes and, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard old thing and two weeks is a long time. So fingers crossed that not too much breaks, but some things might break sometimes, but we're all, we're all in this together. We're, we're doing our best and, and we know that you'll be patient with us and we've, we've got plans in place and hopefully there'll be enough so. i think they should be i think i think uh, a point is just that um uh to be yeah uh, to be patient if something breaks because it is a it's something totally new um like we've put so many platforms together uh, and tried this out and all, already learned a lot from uh the hackathon experience uh, mm -hmm. last week um so uh Hopefully we can use whatever happens in this coming two weeks to improve for next time. And um, we hope that you can help us improve. Thank you. Thanks everyone. See you Let's on do this. the other side. Bye. Bye. <laughs>